Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Scott Tingey from Carol Fabrics. It'll be my pleasure today to walk you through our Roman Shades 101. Um, I think you'll find it very interesting. Anyway, I hope what I've prepared today will be of uh, use for you. Let's go ahead and get rolling. Like I said, today's webinar agenda. I'd like to start off by talking about Carol Soft Shades, obviously, but more to the point that, you know, what's relevant in today's market some of the shade construction that we do at Carroll Fabrics and our quality control procedures. I like to touch on fabric expectations. A big part of this is choosing the right fabrics or you know the selecting suitable fabrics. Design expectations. Um, there's a little bit of that in this business even though they're Roman shades. Talk about some opportunities for layering with Roman shades. Um, you know Roman shades I think look great when you're doing side panels or a cornice or something. So we'll show you some examples of that. In addition, we'll talk about some of those measuring considerations and, and avoiding train wrecks, as I like to call them, uh, you know, when everything goes wrong because of mismeasure. Such a disappointment to the consumer and the seller, everybody involved when that happens. And we'll talk, just take a minute and talk about when you do order on CarolNet, some of the built-in advantages, no written order form, instant stock verification, 100% pricing accuracy. Think about what we talked about before we got rolling here today when we spoke about some of the uh, Carol business model. So to start with, what I've done is I've put up uh, four or five Roman shades that kind of represent some of the better sellers that we have at Carol. So we just, you know, the one on the left obviously is a flat Roman shade and uh, that's one of the better sellers. People like the flat Roman shade for obvious reasons. You can see the entire design motif when it's in the down position. Um, it's actually one of the better stacking shades if you're putting it over French doors or inward swinging window, that type of thing. Um, with child safety, uh, the f uh, flat cordless Roman shade, meaning there are no draw cords to pull the shade up and down. You simply push up at the bottom or pull, pull at the uh, bottom hemline to pull the shade down. Great shade um, shown here with a little attached valance. Then you've got the front and reverse fold Roman shades, and <clears throat> you can kind of look, and I'll show in more detail in a minute. But a front fold shade is always going to be the ones with the dowels that are sewn to the front of the shade. The pockets are in the front, and when we say reverse fold, that's just putting the dowels or the pockets to the rear of the shade. And like I said, we'll go into a little bit more of that in a few minutes. And then the soft fold Roman shade, or some people call the happy shade or the smiley shade real popular shade at Carol Fabrics and uh, we sell a lot of these so just kind of a look-see at some of the more popular shades that we're, we're selling at Carol. So let's take a second and talk about the flat Roman shade and kind of use it to kind of talk about some other features and benefits that are involved with all of our shades. So as I said earlier with the flat Roman shade it's an excellent shade to um, if you want to expose your design and you know uh, versus having some of the pattern hidden uh, hidden in a fold or hidden in a pocket with a dowel in it. Flat Roman shade is great. Um, but a couple of things as a call out. We'll basically be talking about inside or outside mount shades today. So here's a view of a standard head rail that could be on a flat Roman shade or any of the other shades for that matter. And it's an inch and a half by three quarters. So it projects out from the wall an inch and a half. If you're selling or installing this particular shade as an inside mount, you can see that what we've done is we put a pre drill and pre drilled grommet through the head rail. So therefore, when you put the screw up through there, it doesn't come in any contact with the fabric at all. And the first thing it hits is the wood or, or you know, the frame that you're screwing the, the uh, screw into for the, um, I want to say headboard for the head rail. Um, so, and the reason we did that in past, when you'd put the screw up just through the fabric and through the board, all it needs to do is catch a little thread on the shade and then it puts a big runner in it and it instantly makes that shade not usable. Hence order chasing, order reorder, all that kind of stuff that nobody wants to deal with. And lastly, and we do that on all our inside mount shades, by the way, all standard head rails have that. And, um, and then when we talk about the stacking height, usually on a flat Roman shade, depending on how long you've ordered it, but even then it's not that big of a difference. It can stack anywhere from five to seven inches. It's just a great shade, especially inside mount. You don't, you know, you don't want to take up a lot of your view when the shade's in the uh, stacked position. Great shade to use that for. In addition, we have the flat Roman shade. Just some of the features I can talk about. Uh, some of the callouts are that we do, as standard, line that with a classic sateen lining, which is a 50-50 cotton poly blend, which is a great lining. It can be sold inside or outside mount. We talked about the stacking, um, so you know about that. 
We always tell you that folds may require dressing the shade as raised or lowered. It's all about training it to fold properly. Those of you who have sold Roman shades, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We do use a Guterman cotton thread. It's color coordinated. We don't say we match, but we coordinate our threads. And you can get a maximum width of 96 inches wide and a maximum length of 96 inches long. And for child safety, we do a braided pull cord. In addition, you have some great lining options. You can do blackout lining. And the call out here, and the reason I have it in red, anyone that's ever sold a flat Roman shade with blackout, you know that you have to physically sew the rings to the shade. And in doing so, you create little pinholes wherever the rings are sewn on the shade. And even with blackout lining, you're, you know, you're putting the needle through that. So the first time it's in the light of a window and the light shining through, boom, you have little pinholes. So we, what we've done to eliminate that is we are now interlining. So when we say interlining, you'd have your face fabric, an inner lining, and then you'd also have the blackout lining behind that. And what that has done, it's eliminated the pinhole. So that is available on the flat Roman shade with Carol. And one other shade that I'll show you here in a few minutes. With the flat Roman shade, you can do banding and decorative hem, top down, bottom up. We have motorized lift systems and the different attached valances. So you can do a lot with a Roman shade. Just kind of a, throwing these in as like a did you know. So for example, did you know that, you know, I told you the head rail projected out an inch and a half minimum. Well, you can take that head rail and just rotate it up 90 degrees, if you will, or turn it. And um, then you're basically taking, you can follow the mouse. Now the head rail is only one inch. And the up and down portion of the vertical would be the one and a half. So we've just kind of flipped the head rail. And when we do that, we can still do the pre-drilled holes for an inside mount or put the little flaps on if it's an outside mount. All the screw eyes, all the equipment still goes there. But what this allows you to do is to address shallower recesses. And in addition, think about it if you're doing a French door or whatever and you want the cloth closer to the glass. Um, <clears throat> this is a great little option to do. It's at no additional charge. You just have to specify it on your order. In addition, all of our shades come with what we're calling a level or squeeze ball. And all that does um, is you can actually shorten the length of the shade. Um, usually that comes into play if you've done an inside mount, the window's a little bit out of square, and you need to re excuse me, raise the left or the right-hand side of the shade. Well, at the bottom of each draw cord, you find these little squeeze balls. And all you have to do is squeeze them, and then you can just pull the draw cord down through it. In other words, you're shortening the shade, and you can do that across the whole shade. Installers love it. It's a great tool. <clears throat> and then for child safety, all of our shades have the shroud. And when I say the shroud, that's this woven piece that goes through here. It sews along with the ring at every six inches. And then the actual draw cord, which is this thin polyester, actually goes in and out of the shroud. So if a young child was to grab the shroud, they would not be able to pull it out far enough to put around their head, and they would not be able to get to this draw cord unless they had the dexterity skills to, you know, to dig through there and find that cord and pull it out, which would be, um, a, you know, according to child safety, we're good here. So I think this is a, you know, without doing extra layers of lining and all the different things different workrooms have tried to do for the uh, child safety, the shrouds worked real, real well, and it is approved um, by those in charge of that particular uh, child safety regulation. So let's kind of jump off the flat shade and look at the front fold Roman shade. And uh, this is just another picture, you know, showing the dowels. Uh, they're approximately every six inches apart. We use a stiffener that's inserted into the pockets once they're created. Here's a view of an outside mount shade where before we showed you the inside mount with the holes in it. On an outside mount, we actually put a little end cap that goes on the end of the shade and we send it with L brackets. So it's just put on probably the way you're used to doing it, very conventional with an L bracket and screws. But here again, this shade also is a great shade for stacking. Um, it stacks up pretty much just like a, uh, a flat Roman shade. So it's very usable under that scenario. But here again, this is an outside mount, not an inside. And you've got the little end flap on the end of the shade and kind of get an idea of the little pockets. Also get an idea that when you're doing a print <clears throat> and you interrupt it at all with a, with a pocket, you can see, you know, you have to make that decision if that's if that works for you or not. <clears throat> I've been told that it's better to do a front pocket versus a reverse pocket as far as allowing the, the pattern to be seen. <clears throat> so that's a decision you as a designer make, you know, when you're making that, uh, putting that order together. 
just a couple of the specs they do start to fall in line they're pretty much the same um, you know we always say a little bit of dressing that's required on the front and the reverse fold they actually you know they actually perform pretty well as far as um, folding because they've got the dowels in them they work a little bit better but we still say they need to be hand dressed and you know customer kind of shown how to how to operate them color coordinated thread still the same 96 by 96 size and you can see you do have a blackout lining and banding all those same options the only difference on the blackout lining on on this shade is you don't have the inner lining in there because you don't need it because it's the dowels that the rings are sewn on versus straight on the on the fabric itself it's sewn to actually where the pocket where the dowel is here's another kind of did you know what i did is i just took that shade and i cut it in half and just kind of wanted to show you like seven different things one there's the braided cord so when the shades in the in, all the way in the down position all that you have is a braided cord so there's a child safety feature um, you have the cord lock there's actually two sizes of cord locks that we use depending on how many drawstrings will be going through it we you know we adjust the size of the cord lock if you will the screw eyes are polished so therefore they don't uh, burr and you know wear on the draw cords or whatever that makes sense they won't fray on you um, here's a regular cord pull it's kind of a barrel shape that we use there's a little leveler adjusters that I showed you or talked about earlier. They're at the base of every draw cord on a shade. The rings, just kind of want to take a second and talk about all these rings that are on the shade. Used to be, oh my gosh, plastic rings, the heat's going to, they're going to crack or they're going to snap, they're going to get brittle, they're going to turn yellow, you know, every other thing that you could think of. Um, maybe 10, 15 years ago, but these rings now are everything we put on a shade has to go through a lot of field engineering we send them off to testing laboratories and all that stuff where they they get rated and you know so we just that's just not a problem but any of you are thinking that I just wanted to put that to rest um, and then I told you earlier about the safety shroud that's on every drawstring so that's kind of the back in the shade one I didn't list is you have also have a double weight bar on the bottom of the shade and weight is good in a Roman shade it helps it hang nicer and perform much better so inside there is a double weight bar Here's the reverse fold, just the opposite of the front fold where the dowels are in the back. You can kind of see where it's pinched to the back here. And that's a dowel that you, you know, you'd slip in a, a stiffener, if you will, um, or pocket, I should say. And it's an outside mount, so you've got the flap, but you can just kind of see uh, the similarities. It stacks real nice. Personally, I think stripes work great on this particular shade because you can maintain the whole pattern even though you're putting in a pocket toward the back of the shade. So just kind of a little call out there if it means something to you. A lot of the same stuff, same lining. Um, we do kind of give you a little call out that if you're using a, a real noticeable print that this shade, remember, you've got about a half inch of fabric that folds to the back of the shade that's lost from view once that pocket's created. So if you've got a pattern that you're looking at and you know, you're going to lose it every six inches by about a half an inch. So sometimes this isn't the best shade when you're doing real... Um, real easy to read print you know where you can just tell if something's out of place that kind of thing um, but lot, all the same stuff is the same here as far as width and length and your options are the same as the other shades also then we have the happy shade or at carol we call it the soft roman shade a couple of the call outs with this one is this particular shade has a smile in it and it remains with a smile even when the shades let um lowered you know to the lowest position it will still maintain a shade so we tell you when you measure you just measure from the top down to where the weight bar is or the short point of the shade and then this will be a little bit extra that accounts for the smile of the shade and we tell you um, to do an outside mount only then you don't have to worry about light leaks and things like that outside mount it's got that same inch and a half by three quarter inch head rail that's wrapped you've got your fabric returns I um, mean you can just kind of see it works you know pretty much just like any of the shades one of the call outs here is though if you're worried about stacking this probably isn't the shade for you unless you're outside mounting it and you're putting it up high enough to where it'll stack up out of your way but um, just because the smile stays in place you obviously have more of a, a stacking height that's involved pretty self-explanatory just a couple of things on this there's a couple of differences um, this is an outside mount only um, that's what we recommend, but I also know designers that they've used this shade for stationary, inside mount, different things. So I'm not telling you how to design. 
but we just sort of, you know, if you're using it for a fully functional shade, it really works better as an outside mount. Told you the bottom hem stays in effect in any position. Um, another one is because there's only two drawstrings, if I go back, there's only a string on the left and a draw, a draw cord on the left and a draw cord on the right. Um, and if the shade's over 50, then you'd actually have another, another smile, if you will, and then there'd be a third string uh, all the way, you know, on the right-hand side. But because of that, the shade tends to hourglass just a little bit where it kind of toes in on the sides. So we just say when you're ordering it, and we're talking outside mount here, um, order it an inch wider than what you've normally been trained to order shades. A little bit, we'll talk about some measuring, but, you know, if you th I always do my shades three inches wider than the window. We're saying go four inches wider with this particular shade just to, to do that. Um, this shade with the blackout lining option also has that inner lining put in there to reduce pinholes because you can just imagine that you would be sewing rings straight on the fabric because it does hang flat. So that one we've actually inserted the inner lining in. So it's three layers, if you will, but it does eliminate those, if, if not eliminate, greatly, greatly, greatly reduces the pinholes um, so you don't have any light coming through. You can band and there's trim options, motorization, and also valances. So kind of a did you know, I just wanted to get out there is, you know, in order to, and this is 101, most of you probably know that, but in order to have the side-by-side -side shades look the same in pattern matching and in fold spacing, meaning if I had three shades going into a room, three windows side-by-side, -side, if I want them all to look the same, if I want the folds to break when they're pulling up at the same place, if I want the patterns to match, all that good stuff, the shades must be ordered at the exact same length. Don't make one a half inch taller or a half inch shorter. They need to be the exact same length. In addition, the installer needs to install those shades at the exact same height. So I think that makes, you know, it's pretty clear. Don't fudge and make one a quarter inch longer or half inch shorter because it can throw off the whole ring spacing. And it's the ring spacing that determines where the folds are. And, it, you know, nothing worse than having three shades side by side and one of them... Uh, just doesn't fold in the same, you know, you try to pull them up, tie them up to make them look uniform. And all of a sudden one of them looks totally different based on the way it folds. So you can help us. You can help us by when you do your orders to specify <clears throat> that the shades are going side by side. And that will be an extra call out to the workroom to make sure that we, um, you know, deliver the product in a manner that will be um, befitting of your company and that your consumer will like a lot. Talk just a second about the cordless Roman shade. Um, I think you all know kind of the cordless deal is there are still cords in the back of the shade, but there's no draw cords that you physically, you know, pull and lock in a cord lock, that kind of thing. This shade, you can't see it, but there's a couple of plastic hand grips on it. And you simply push them up or pull it down with not, you know, with, with not a lot of effort. Um, this one here, we're showing you an attached valance. Here's the reason why. You can order this shade inside or outside mount. Obviously, if I was doing an inside mount, this two and a half inch plastic end cap wouldn't be seen because I'd recess it inside the window. However, if I was doing an outside mount, and if I didn't put a valance or something else over it, I'd have this gaposis, if you want to use that as an, a word, and you'd be able to have this cap exposed. So a lot of you may put it under a wood cornice, any kind of valance, or you could adopt you know, the attached valance option that could come on the shade um, if it's going to be up there all by itself. Um, be a great, great add-on for you just by adding the attached valance. So that's kind of a call out on the cordless Roman shades. Plus, we've made a major manufacturing change, um, which, you know, we've always had the thing in shades. Oh, there's just too much going on, you know. You look from the outside of the house, the white lining, but there's cords running everywhere. And on the cordless, we also we used to, if you will, we had a a bar on the bottom and a bar about five, three and a half to four inches up. And then we had posts, if you will, see these little posts right here, stabilizers. There's one here, but you just can't see, or there's just one on each end. And the reason those were there is when you push the shade up with your hand to push it up in the up position, this would kind of cave in, if you will. You're pushing it up with your hand. It just sort of like caves in. And so we put these stabilizers here so it's just a nice straight bottom hem that goes up and then you pull it down 
Well, we've developed a technology now with the type of headrail that we're using that it is so sensitive that you don't have to worry about that. We have a double weight bar in here, but you don't have the stabilization posts anymore. So when you're pushing the shade up, you don't have to worry about it concaving, if that's a word. Um, it, it just handles real nice. And now it just has the regular uh, uh, looks on the backside just like a regular flat Roman shade or you know and you don't have all this extra hardware so that's a big spec change this is the way they come now so cordless head rail couple of different call outs 72 by 72 where all those other shades were 96 by 96 these are 72 by 72 no pull cords it's a great shade for child safety one thing I always say but remember it is something you have to be able to reach and pull down you know if you've got a cordless shade and it's eight feet off the ground you need a step ladder to go up there and pull it down then it doesn't make sense so you kind of think of those things when you're going through the process of measuring you can do an inside outside mount we do sort of recommend that you use medium weight fabrics seem to work the best um, you can overload it with weight big heavy woven blackout you know the retune you just get it to where it's just overpowering the ability of the head rail to pull it up so we always like to say medium weight fabrics work the best um, here again make sure you uh, Dress the folds when you're operating it. Remember, it attaches, it raises by the touch of the hand. There's two hand grips. Some people say, I want to take the hand grips off. I don't want a plastic. Well, that's fine. But they'll come with that. And it, it's a good way of keeping the shade from being soiled. You can do blackout lining, banding trim, and also the attached valances. We do have the top down, bottom up uh, available to you. And you can do a top down, bottom up with the flat, the front, and the reverse fold shades that I showed you earlier. And all this is, is a, a, what you've got going here. This isn't wood, but it's a hardened material. So it's a nice rigid four inch tall cornice that this head rail here slips up underneath. There's a couple of call outs, for example, on a flat Roman shade. The maximum width as you can make is 48 inches. And that's because of the cords and that's pretty much driven by child safety, limiting what we can do there. But um, as you can see on the right hand side, this is a great shade if you want to lower it down for light and still maintain privacy. Um, I'm sure most of everybody listening to this knows exactly the um, advantages of using a top down bottom up product. So just know that you can also get that in the Roman shades. Now, just a couple, if you look down here in red to start off with, I told you the flat shade was 48 by 72. But if you do the front or reverse fold shade, we can actually make that one 60 inches wider thanks to the dowels and the stability by 72. So you can get that one a little bit wider. These are the flat and reverse a little bit wider. Know that there's two separate cord systems, one on the right and one on the left uh, available. And here again, I told you earlier, it's available only on the flat front fold and reverse fold shade. So that would be the top down, bottom up. Let's kind of review the head rail sizes and which is important especially when you're doing inside mount but for example the standard headrail is cut in the wood shop if you will at one and a half inches by three quarters the three quarters doesn't mean anything to you it's the one and a half that's what projects out from the wall the upended headrail when we turn the headrail it basically requires it projects out about one inch okay about one inch the cordless headrail I showed you earlier is two and a quarter and the top down bottom up uh, headrail is two and a quarter Here's what you need to think about. On average, you can add about an additional quarter of an inch of thickness or fourth thickness for the fabric that wraps around the headrail. The heavier the fabric, maybe you want to go more than a quarter of an inch. So I've got these basic headrail sizes, but I've got to remember when I'm doing all these different fabrics to add a little extra, make sure I've got enough inside depth to make that shade fit flush all the way into the window. So here again, it's just kind of remember to take all that into consideration. So speaking of considerations, let's kind of shift gears for a minute and talk a little bit about fabric. Um, you know, at Carol Fabrics, we have over 10,000 SKUs of fabric. We probably, this is just one guy guessing, but we probably anywhere from 1,500 to a couple thousand SKUs a year, maybe more. So lots of fabric coming in, lots of fabric going out, that kind of thing. It's a fashion business. So sometimes getting to know, you know, knowing each fabric, what it's going to do, but that's a pretty tough tough thing to do so I've, I've always kind of tackled this as far as more like fabric considerations or um, knowing characteristics if you will 
So, you know, one of the things when you're working with prints and wovens and things is it's not uncommon in our industry to have print patterns printed off grain. There's kind of a funny example on the left hand side. You know, the top picture, everything's perfect. But on the bottom picture, when they're when they're putting they're printing the fabric, you know, however they're applying the pattern to it, if they get that off grain, because the goods that they're printing it on are square or rectangular, if you will. But if they print the, gra- the the pattern off, then when you hang the shade in the window, maybe kind of as this center picture shows, you can see how the dots try to run up a little bit on you, the little square squares. And sometimes that can be like, oh my gosh, your customer may not, you know, like that. Look at what you can do with wovens. Wovens are always going to give you some, you know, there's plaid, for example. Um, just, you know, if it stretches or whatever. So knowing the characteristics of fabrics and kind of what can get you in trouble are good things to think about. Now, granted, we work our vendors over where we get fabrics from pretty hard about making sure that everything's woven or it's printed straight, you know, and it's something that we are always working on. Um, At the workroom, we go to great extents to make sure that we deliver you a product like that. But every once in a while, we may call you or tell you, this pattern isn't working, you know, it's just, you know, if you put a valance over it or something like that, where you could kind of take that little view off the top of the headrail, you may get calls like that on occasion. Um, another one is we have uh, horizontal stripes on some of our p- fabric. And we have a machine, we call it a tunnel machine, that actually sews the pockets in for those front and reverse fold shades I was showing you, where we slip a dowel. Well, if you get one of those pockets that ha- just happens to hit along a stripe, I can guarantee you that, that stripe not always is perfectly straight. But the pocket is. But then when you look at it, you think the pocket's sewn crooked when really it's the it's the you know the weave of the fabric. So you kind of have to have that as a, a a scenario to be thinking about. Here's another shade here in the middle where it just shows. See kind of how it runs up. And here's just a solid on the right hand side, just a textured surface. But sometimes even those slubs or whatever, you'd be surprised. But some consumers will say, well, that just doesn't look like the pocket's sewn straight. I promise you, the pockets are sewn straight. Um, it's just the fabric so just things to think about you know maybe if I've got something like that maybe a flat shade is going to be my best option you know those types of things another thing is kind of consumer expectations as far as uh, how they what's the word I'm looking for how they want it to feel if you will so for example um, for most of the time that I've been in this business it's more about fabrics that can hold a fold real nice and they fit and they just they're real soft looking they're just structured looking you know when I think about that I think about using cotton prints 100% cotton prints that will hold a fold textured cotton solids uh, some of the linen blend prints you know the cotton blends that just are very soft and they and, and they um, they work real well plus and they just have this very organized look to them in the window okay but we also know that's out there is this look kind of an unstructured or relaxed or casual look which is very popular and if you get some real soft linens your hemp and your burlap um, you know just totally opposite of what we're looking at here but you see this a lot now you could say relaxed or casual I've seen it in modern homes I mean just it's just know, you know, when you go out to the home, it's all about consumer expectations and setting that expectation for the consumer. They fall in love with the burlap. They fall in love with the hemp. But if, on the other hand, they're looking at a picture of a shade that's very structured, they're not going to get that. So it's just a matter of making sure that, you know, they know the difference between the two. And it's a design style on your part. Talk for just a few minutes about the ability to layer draperies, excuse me, layering drapery and valances with shades. Um, so what we did is we just have three windows here. Do some ads we've done at Carol Fabrics, but in all cases the shades are supported with a uh, with a you know with a, a layering opportunity. So here, kind of a dining room nook, and you've got a little box pleated valance over the top. Just adds you know it's a bigger ticket for you. It just I think it just adds to the room. Here's a nicely done bedroom where there's a shade, but here are just the drapery side panels on each side that everything ties together from a decor standpoint. Here again, standpoint. Here again, layer, layer, layer. Here's another little, maybe a family room type setup with a banded Roman shade with a little um, box pleated style valance over the top. Um, 
maybe a little here's a the happy shade kind of a little ethnic print with just a little what we call our low profile cornice that's only 10 10 inches here six inches in length there it's just a no padding same with this guy in the middle all three of these actually now i look at them but you can play it in a real modern scenario but you can just see they look pretty cool these shades with an opportunity to do a little cornice over them or any type of top treatment it really kind of enhances the look of the shade. And here again, if I had a board or a shade that was running off just a little bit, most of that's all hidden now underneath a top treatment. So I don't know, tricks of the trade or what have you. So let's switch gears once again. Um, try not to take too much of your time and talk about avoiding a train wreck when it comes to measuring considerations. And I really, I'm almost positive that everybody that's listening to this is, if you've learned to measure for hard products, you know, all those things, there's not a lot of difference. But, um, you know, the number one reason shades come back, um, it once you get rid of the ones that had the flaw in the fabric, the worker made it bad, uh, this or that, it's for measuring. It's for measuring. It's still the number one category. And it's hard to understand why sometimes because they're not that hard to do but let's just kind of go through this uh, first of all if you're doing inside mount shades we'll talk about first of all it's important to make sure that the windows in square and can handle that particular shade so what do we mean by an out of square window well here's some overblown examples but they do kind of drive the point home the, the window if it's not square when that shades up there it's not going to hang straight and there's another example over here on the right hand side um, and believe me, they're out there, you know, they're out there. We usually say if the window's more than a half inch out of square, and most people say if it's more than, you know, three-eighths to a half an inch, they're going to they're gonna switch over to an outside mount shade. Another one is making sure that you've got enough depth to put the shade into. Nothing, in my opinion, looks worse than if, if I had a head rail that's two inches, but I only have an inch and a half versus a verse amount of depth or recess, so a half inch, half inch of my shade sticking out into the room, and you, know, you pay all that money, and it, it just doesn't look like that's a you know it was meant to be that way. Um, so we say you know when you're measuring, make sure you've got the depth and measure your width in three places. And I think sometimes, you know, I'm not very tall, but even if I was normal tall, five seven, five eight, five nine, whatever that is. You're pretty good when you're standing on your feet and you can grab this measurement and obviously this measurement, but sometimes this measurement's a little bit out of our reach. And I wonder sometimes, not passing judgment, if we're not grabbing this measurement and sure enough it runs on me by a quarter of an inch um, because the measurement that you send into Carol is a net measurement and we take the deduction, but all of a sudden it's a little narrow up here. We forgot to check and then when the shade comes out, it's too wide and it won't fit. But just to call out, three places in the width. They say three places in the length. You know, I think that's a good habit, but not as critical as if you're doing the width. So just throwing that out there. Here's another one. I just put these as, you know, obstructions on the inside mount. When the shade comes down, they're going to hit these, aren't they? These are pretty hard not to notice, but sometimes there's more subtle things. It could be a double hung window and just a little locking mechanism or what have you. It could be there's a little, I don't know, I've seen crazier things, a trinket in the window that... It's not going to get moved. The consumer just has had it there for years. They're not going to, you know, all that kind of stuff, craziness that can happen on a job. So those are, you know, if you think about on inside mounts, if you think about the window being square, if you think about making the correct measurements, and you think about the obstructions, if you can do those three things, um, you're usually in pretty good shape that way. So you look for outside mount measuring. Now, this is just a Carol Fabrics, and you'll notice I'll say the word minimum. So we just kind of, our guidance when you're measuring for outside mount shades is to make the shade an inch and a half wider or past the window on each side. A minimum of two inches above the window. And then if you're going to bring it down below the window to come down two inches below the window. Minimum, minimum, my friends. If you want to go 16 inches above the window, you know, five inches wider on each side, that's fine. But we do say as a minimum, you should consider going an overall three or an inch and a half on each side. And remember, there was a couple of shades in there. It says, and on top of that, add one extra inch to whatever you're doing. So, you know, just kind of think that through when you're measuring. Nothing works. Well, I think I have a picture. Here's a guy that tried to measure and just, you know, maybe if he stood straight on, this would be even with the molding. But, you know, you spend good money for stuff and, and then you mount it on the molding or something like that. It just doesn't look good. 
Ideally, you want to get to at least where you're overlapping on each side. Of course, we've got this looks like a top down bottom up because of the size of the balance. But here's a box pleat, but you see it overlapping the window on each side. It's just a correct way of doing things. And it's just a little bit of extra thinking on our part sometimes when we measure. So CarolNet saves you so much time. Um, you think about it when you do your order, it's an instant stock check. Uh, meaning you know right then and there and you can do this in the customer's home if you get your iPad or your laptop you know if it's in stock you got 100% pricing accuracy you don't have to go back and say oh did I charge him for the banding was that by the foot or was that by the yard none of that you don't have to figure any yardage none of that kind of stuff and no written order forms this will print you off an order form um, see what I've got left here so if I'm going to do a Roman shade I'd you know I'd go into the Carol Nett, tell them I want to do a Roman shade. Then I'd pick out, say I picked out a flat Roman shade. And then here's my spec sheet. On the right hand side, I would just put in the information that I need, which is all pretty standard stuff over here. Up here, I'd, you know, whatever the shade is, this would tell me what options are available for that shade. So if I wanted an attached valance or whatever I wanted to do. And then I would put my fabrics in. It does a stock check based on the size that I'm trying to do. So I know, oh wow, the fabric's in stock. I don't have to go back to the shop, get on the phone and call, hey, you've got 14 yards, put it on hold, da 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 da. You place the order and boom, it's already there, reserved for you. Uh, matter of fact, the order is in process, you know, right away. And then you hit calculate and you get a price. You get a price that's 100% accurate. You didn't have to do any yardage calculation, none of that kind of stuff. It's just, you know, sound like I'm trying to sell CarolNet, but I can tell you it's a time saver if you put it to use in your business. So, and you can set pricing to be retail, wholesale, lots of different things. And you probably already know this, but we do webinars on CarolNet also. We invite you to attend. So here's that. Remember I told you um, no paperwork. You need an order to keep behind in your folder. or You want to actually print this and send it to the customer. Lots of different things you can do. Um, and this is really your spec sheet or your order form that's already, it's there. I mean, sizes, everything, fabric content, anything you can think of that's put on there. So anyway, that's what we're trying to do to make things a little easier for you. Um, just kind of a, a, a talk on upcoming webinars that you might be interested. We've now changed our homepage. When you go into Carol Fabrics, all you have to do is go down to that bottom right hand corner, click on that and it will show you what webinars are out there and you can register for anyone that's on there. Sometimes we'll put about three months worth on. So you can, you know, register. Once you do that, it sends you reminders. It's just a pretty slick little system. In addition, in the not too distant future, you'll also be able to click on, um, actually you can do that if you go to another spot on, the, on CarolNet, but we'll be moving them over. This webinar along with other webinars will be on there with a table of contents. So if you don't want to listen to the whole hour that we've been speaking, you can just go in, hey, what did he say about fabric? You know, and just kind of go in uh, like a table of contents and, and get into that webinar anywhere you want to if you're using it for training and those kind of things. So I want to thank you today for taking a little bit of your time to go through Soft Shades 101. We'll try to uh, up the ante a little bit as we go further. Soft Shades, you know, 202, whatever, um, as we kind of move along. But Remember the reason we do it. You know, we want to take a lot of those old things associated with being in this industry and make them streamline, make you more efficient. You're more efficient. We're more efficient. And it all works together. So hope you have a great day and hope uh, sales come your way. And thank you very much for attending. Bye-bye.